we're going to go over two equivalent definitions of a normal subgroup. Then we'll see an example, then a non-example, and then we'll finish off with a quick proof of a basic result concerning normal subgroups. In later lessons, we'll see that normal subgroups are extremely important, but for now, let's just focus on making sure we understand what a normal subgroup is. Let H be a subgroup of a group G. Then, H is called a normal subgroup of G, and we may write that like this, using a symbol that's like the less than or equal to symbol, but with a triangle instead of a less than. We may write H is a normal subgroup of G like that if H is closed with respect to conjugates. The conjugate of an element A is any element of the form X, A, x inverse, where the x and the x inverse can come from the containing group G. They don't have to come from the subgroup H. So for H to be closed with respect to conjugates means that any element A of H has all of its conjugates also contained in H. Again, if we take an element A from our subgroup H, then for any element x from the containing group g, x a x inverse is a conjugate of the element a, and it must be the case that all conjugates of all elements of h are also in h for h to be a normal subgroup. Let's unwind this definition for a moment just to see all the restrictions on a normal subgroup. A normal subgroup of a group G is going to be a non-empty subset of G that is closed with respect to three things, products, inverses, and conjugates. Being closed with respect to products and inverses is what makes it a subgroup, and then the additional restriction of being closed with respect to conjugates is what will make it a normal subgroup. And here's an equivalent definition, which at a glance probably looks a little bit nicer. Some textbooks will use this as the standard definition. H is called a normal subgroup of the group G if every left coset of H is equal to its respective right coset. So for subgroup H to be a normal subgroup, there must be no difference between its left and right cosets. Keep in mind that saying each left coset AH is equal to its corresponding right coset HA is not saying that each AH is equal to H. A. This is not true in general. It's just the whole cosets that are equal. The individual elements may not correspond in this particular way. I'll leave a link in the description to the lesson where we prove these two definitions of normal subgroups are equivalent. But let's get a taste of each definition in a couple of examples. In our first example, we'll consider this set N containing the identity permutation and these other two permutations. It is a normal subgroup of the symmetric group S3. I'm not going to fully verify that this is a normal subgroup. You can try doing that yourself. Of course, for starters, we'd have to verify that it is indeed a subgroup, but let's just take a second to look at the conjugate condition. If we just take for granted that N is a subgroup, for it to be a normal subgroup, it must be closed with respect to conjugates. So for example, if we take this element from N, the permutation 1, 2, 3, all of its conjugates must also be in N. Remember, a conjugate is any element of the form x, 1, 2, 3, x, inverse, where x can be any element of the group S3. This is the form of any conjugate of this particular element, 1, 2, 3. So let's look at one example of a conjugate of this particular permutation. We're going to compose an element on the left and we'll compose with its inverse on the right. In this case, the permutation 2, 3 is its own inverse, so the conjugate looks like this. And note that this permutation 2, 3 is an element of the group S3, so this is a valid conjugate. And if we go through this composition of permutations from right to left, it's equal to this permutation, which is an element of 
n, as we expected. You can see how this composition of permutations maps 2 to 3, but then maps 3 to 1. And so, in total, 2 gets mapped to 1. Then, it also maps 3 to 2, but then that gets mapped to 3, but then that gets mapped back to 2. So, in total, 3 gets mapped to 2. 1 is mapped to 2, and then, in total, is mapped to 3. So, you can see that this composition of permutations equals this, which is an element of n. And if you check the rest of the conjugates for all elements of n, you will see that it is closed with respect to conjugates. Thus, it is a normal subgroup. Thinking about the coset definition of a normal subgroup, we could also look at the left and right cosets of n using this element 2, 3. And those look like this. And as we would expect, they are indeed equal. Looking at the left coset first, 2, 3 composed with the identity is just 2, 3. 2, 3 composed with 1, 2, 3 is 1, 3. 2, 3 composed with 1, 3, 2 is 1, 2. And a similar string of calculations gives us the right coset, and you can see that they are identical. And this would be the case for all left and right cosets of n. For n, since it's a normal subgroup, there is no difference between the left cosets and the right cosets. Again, I want to point out how the elements don't correspond exactly in this way. Like, for example, 2, 3 composed with 1, 2, 3 gives us 1, 3. However, 1, 2, 3 composed with 2, 3 gives us 1, 2. Two. In total, the sets are the same, though the elements don't all come about in the same way. It's each coset AH that equals HA, not necessarily each element AH equaling HA. Now we can look at a similar non-example. This set H is a subgroup of the symmetric group S3. It contains the identity and the permutation 1, 2, which is its own inverse. But if we start by looking at a conjugate of 1, 2, here is an example of a conjugate of the element 1, 2. This is equal to 1, 3, and this permutation is not an element of H. H is not closed with respect to conjugates. It's not a normal subgroup. In the example that we did, I just showed you one example of a conjugate being in N, which was just to show you how you would go about verifying for sure that N is a normal subgroup. This alone wasn't actually proof that N is a normal subgroup. But of course, in this case, one counterexample of showing a conjugate that does not appear in H is sufficient to verify that H is not a normal subgroup. The left and right cosets here are also different. If we look at the coset 2, 3, H, this left coset, it contains these elements, whereas the right coset, H2, 3, contains these elements, and you can see that they differ. So again, it's not a normal subgroup by either definition. All right, let's do a quick proof just to get some practice with the definition of a normal subgroup. There is a special type of group whose subgroups are all normal subgroups. We're talking about abelian groups. If H is a subgroup of an abelian group G, then H is a normal subgroup of G. All subgroups of an abelian group are normal subgroups. The proof is really easy. To prove H is a normal subgroup, we take an arbitrary element from H and an arbitrary element from G, and we want to show that the conjugate of A with this element X is an element of H. That's pretty easy to do. The conjugate is X A X inverse, but because this is all from an abelian group, that is equal to x, x inverse a, because abelian groups are commutative. But x, x inverse a, by definition of inverse, is equal to the identity times a, which is equal to just a. And obviously, a is an element of h, because we took it from h. And so we've shown that h is closed with respect to conjugates, and thus h is a normal subgroup of G. All right, I hope you look forward to following lessons where we show just how useful this definition will be. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and if you find these abstract algebra videos helpful, please consider supporting Wrath of Math on Patreon. I'll leave a link in the description, and it's a huge help. See you next time.
know me. We'll unwrap each other until we're never lonely. Oh.